In the introductory lecture, we learned the basics of iconography with a view to unlocking the mysteries of the 12 festal icons by the world-renowned iconographer Aidan Hart that you have housed here at St. John's Church in Clevedon. The examples you have here are early Aidan Hart from the time when he started out in his career. We discovered what makes an icon different from a pretty religious picture. The phrase I used, every brushstroke is a prayer, is a key to understanding icons. We also started to appreciate that there is a powerful, dynamic, two-way link between the archetype, the subject matter, and the viewer, the venerator. For those who wish to learn more about iconography, there are literally thousands of published texts, but a good starting point is icons and saints of the Eastern Orthodox Church. We now move on to start to learn how to read, interpret and venerate an icon. It is like most disciplines, when you start to appreciate the language and symbolism, your understanding deepens and develops. No matter how apparently simple the archetype, there is always something new to learn, ponder and meditate upon. This icon depicts the simultaneous events of the Annunciation, the dramatic appearance of the Archangel Gabriel rushing forward with his message, the fear and consent of the Virgin, and the moment of the miraculous conception, the Incarnation. Usually with this archetype, there is a stylized architectural background that represents a number of metaphors for the Virgin. The building behind her is a doorway, portal, a temple and a sanctuary, all reminiscent of petitions we find adapted much later in 1587 in the Litany of Loreto, also known as the Litany of Our Lady. For example, Vessel of Honour, pray for us, Tower of David, pray for us. Tower of Ivory, pray for us. Gate of Heaven, pray for us. The sacred red awning refers to the tent of dwelling, the tabernacle above the Holy of Holies described in Exodus. Some versions of this icon also show two protruding poles used to carry the Ark of the Covenant. Again, a reference to the Virgin becoming the Ark of the Covenant, carrying the incarnate word. Many versions of this icon show Mary holding or spinning with red wool. This is derived from the lovely story described in the Proto-Evangelum of St. James in the Apocrypha. This describes Mary's presentation in the temple as a young girl as she was given the task of weaving the veil of the sanctuary using purple and scarlet thread. Legend says that it is that veil which is rent in two after the crucifixion. At the age of 12, she returns to her home in Nazareth to complete her work. After spinning with the red thread, she pauses and goes to the well for water. Some versions of this icon show the well, as in this example painted for me by Helen McCoy Jenkins. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And at that moment, the Annunciation event occurs with the Archangel Gabriel. As it says in the Akathiskos hymn, Gabriel marveled at the beauty of thy virginity and the splendor of thy purity. And he cried to thee, O mother of God, how can I praise thee as I should? By what name shall I invoke thee? I am troubled and amazed. Therefore, as I was commanded, I cry out to thee, hail full of grace. In iconography, the contrast between light and dark colors is often used to illustrate deep, and mysterious events. 
we already heard about the gold background representing the heavenly glory. Darkness is used to link into the opening three sentences of the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. The darkness is like an announcement of a uniquely creative moment. And here it is shown above the Virgin. The glory of the heavens is torn open to reveal the darkness that existed at the moment of creation. To here show now the moment of the incarnation. I'm now going to go a little off piste. Canon Clover asked for this second talk to be on the Annunciation icon. This quite naturally leads on to the Nativity of our Lord, which was not part of this series of talks. However, there are few features in this icon that become recurring themes later and will help us to understand our quest of learning how to read and venerate these 12 festal icons. The Nativity of Our Lord, another seemingly busy icon, but which contains several features which lead on from the Annunciation icon. The mountain. Momentous events occur on mountains. The sacrifice of Isaac, the theophany of Moses, the burning bush of Horeb, the giving of the law on Sinai, the third temptation of Jesus. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. The Sermon on the Mount, the Transfiguration on Mount Tabor, the Ascension from Mount Olivet. The birth takes place in a cave within the mountain, not an inn. The cave is dark, again linking back to what we've just heard about the imminence of a momentous creative event. The cave is often shown womb-like within the mountain. Note again, the heavens above and now the earth are both torn open by this unique birth. Heaven and earth united. The colours of Our Lady's dress and her birthing robe are very important and are a theme which we shall see repeated throughout these lectures. Red represents humanity. She performed a very human act, carrying and giving human life to the word, to God incarnate. There are other cameo scenes here. The angels, the heavenly host, singing glory in excelsis Deo. The shepherds. The magi, seeing the star pointing to God, the magi followed its radiance. Or as Pope Benedict XVI said, learned men, seeking the signature of God in creation. The midwives bathing and clothing the infant Christ. Confused Joseph, sometimes shown sat on his own, or with Satan tempting and confusing him, causing him to wonder what on earth he has got himself into. Again, the Akathistos hymn puts this wonderfully. Tossed inwardly by a storm of doubts, Prudent Joseph was troubled. So here we have it, an image of a fragile newborn child born fulfilling the Old Testament prophecies. God born a human within a world of our existence. Very literally, the word made flesh. Thank you.